few places are as unforgiving as the North Atlantic. Well, why would one woman in one of the smallest certified planes do it not only once but twice? Let's find out one-on-one. -on -one. Hello and welcome to One on One. I'm Dan Milliken. We're shooting this at Air Adventure. We're at the Flying Eyes booth. If you go to flyingeyesoptics.com, use our discount code, you can get 10% off using taking off, all caps, one word. Also, Clemens Insurance, if you need insurance, Jerry will really help you, clemensinsurance.net. Let's get to it. Catherine Kaiser, thank you so much for, for coming on the show. You're welcome. Okay, and also we have Martin Polly here. So Martin is a friend of mine. Martin is from Germany. He may know a lick or two of German. Catherine, is, uh, you're relatively new to English in the last four years. So Martin's here to give us some support language-wise if we need it. I'll help if needed. <clears throat> but it seems the show could be also in German. Guten Tag, Dan. <laughs> yeah, we're here in Hangar and machen die show heute mal auf Deutsch. Willkommen. <laughs> what would I say in reason? Well, how could I say you're welcome or what? Well, we just announced this show, this episode is in German today. <laughs> All right. Uh, you, you know, on that, um, I was talking to Hoover, Pilot Debrief. He's got a German channel, and he's like pays for each episode for an AI to do his voice in German. Um, so, you, so you need to check out his channel in Germany um, to see if it's... He's worried about the translation. He doesn't know if it's any Well, check good. it out. Yeah. So, by the way, you've got a book out on your journeys, and I've been thumbing through it. I just got it, so I haven't been able to finish it yet. Um, and I, I do have to ask, on that, you, I've got the English version. How did you do the translation from German to English for that book? With a lot of help. I, uh, to save money, of course, I do as much as I can by my own, because it's my soul in this book. But, uh, of course, I have a friend in Texas. He moved 30 years ago from Germany to Texas, so he, he can sp very well speak in both languages. He helped, and even that, after that, I need a lecture. So, yes, uh, but n in my book is no single word artificial intellect. Okay, <laughs> no, no AI created that. Okay, awesome. All right, so Catherine, what we're talking about here is that you've got a Grumman Traveler. And our friend Brian Turner from Just Plain Silly used to have a Traveler. I've, I've flown in the Traveler. I know how small that plane is. And, I mean, I can drive faster than that Traveler can fly. So uh, it is, yeah, it's a very, very small plane. But before we get to that and before we get to the trip, tell me about your, uh, your as a pilot, what your certifications are and where you are as a, you know, in the process. Uh, how I uh, prepared for this trip, or what? No, you asked? no. Uh, Fluglizenzen und Berechtigungen oh. und so weiter. Yeah, uh, it's uh, simple. The PPL. I'm okay. uh, only a VFR pilot. Okay. Uh, it makes no sense to make the IFR because my plane hasn't instruments. I don't have autopilot. I don't have uh, VOR or uh, instruments. I only have the compass, uh, radio, transponder, and the six pack. That's all back to basic. No plane. GPS. Uh, yeah, I use for flight, of course, but we in uh, in Europe we have a lot of GPS jamming and it's boofy, so uh, you have to trust at the end uh, on your paper map. Which we had a great episode at Sun and Fun, you and I, about right. GPS spoofing, yeah. which isn't a big thing here, but apparently I guess from the rest of the world it is. Across the world it is, especially in Eastern Europe, and it's becoming more widespread, uh, sadly, uh, everywhere in the world. Okay, how many hours of flying do you have now? Uh, now I have 1,200 hours. How many hours of flying did you have when you attempted that first trip? Uh, I think 500. 500, okay. So in a, in a very small certified plane with, that was not IFR certified and you're not IFR rated, um, did you have any concerns? <laughs> That's <laughs> I, I'm a single mom of two boys, so I'm very well mentally prepared. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, of course, uh, but 150% uh, preparation is 95% success, and the rest, it doesn't matter. You fly over the mountains in the night, over water, the plane does know it, and it could happen everywhere. Um, but. Um, when your dream uh, don't fear you, then the dream is not big enough. So um, for me, freedom is more important than safety. And I have to say, to fly in America, it's so easy peasy and I love to fly. I'm always longing to go to America for flying. Uh, I love it, uh, your country. 
Well, mm -hmm. I know Martin's talked about too, the freedom that we have here is mm -hmm. amazing. I can definitely relate. This is not just a cost thing. Uh, it is more affordable here, but the access to airspace here, the access to airports around the clock and not just during opening hours, uh, there's no comparison uh, in terms of access, utility, and cost of GA. Uh, we, we live in paradise for pilots yeah. here in the US. In Germany, we have 400 airfields, and even the littlest one with 900 feet runway, 300 meter, has a control tower with landing fees, operation times. So you can't, uh, outside America, it's very overregulated. <laughs> wow, wow. Okay, so we've talked about you and your credentials. Uh, we've talked a little bit about the, the Grumman, but tell me more about the Grumman, its performance specs, its speed, all that kind of stuff. So first, the Grumman, uh, uh, the same size, f for example, the Cessna 172 is 44 thousandths in the world. But the Grumman AA5 is only 3 thousandths, so it's a very little community. And I think at the moment it's only 1,200 flyable, so it's like a family. And um, when there is a problem, the family wants that all the Grumman's uh, still are flyable. So that is the great thing on a Grumman. A Grumman is a... Uh, um, not with, not with Nieten, but glued. It's it's used more glue than rivets. Okay. <laughs> so it gives you 90 kilogram. It's 40 pounds. Uh, no, uh, one. About 200 pounds. But 200 pounds more payload. That is the good thing. And we, it looks very cool. We we slide the canopy. Yes. And uh, like a trainer. And it's the best plane for ditching in the water because in a Piper or Mooney, maybe you have a passenger it's collapsed you can't go out or in a Cessna underwater so of course I don't want to ditch in the right. water but I, I feel more comfortable uh, in a Grumman and um, because it's got a canopy that slides back yes yeah that's right and we have a great guy with David Fletcher you was there in uh, Texas and visit him in his uh, uh, shop uh, he is my holy grail of course I flew before Oshkosh I flew there and learned a lot about maintenance on a Grumman because the European uh, mechanic are not so used to this plane. Uh, my Grumman Traveler has 150 horsepower and I don't have the high compression engine uh, with 160 and that's good for me because there are some spots in the earth you, uh, there is no off gas available so I can use uh, MOGAS and I can fill canisters from the car fuel station in my plane and sometimes of course in this kind of journeys I, I need this. Right. What, t tell me about that first trip. Um, the first time you're coming, why did you decide to go from Germany to uh, to United States? So after I did my license, uh, the first trip went me to North Cape in the northern point of Europe and come back. And when I come back from this journey, I, dis uh, I heard from Oshkosh. E each <laughs> pilot has to minimum once in the life uh, to be in Oshkosh. And the best is to fly in by yourself. And so I decided, of course, I will do this. And I prepared 20 months for this uh, trip. I need a much more license, for example, the night flight license, um, the, the radio license for IFR. It's difficult to the FAA rules, the EASA rules or other. We need a radio license because I come to points. Uh, they are not used to VFR pilots that I understand what they want from me, maybe. So and I did the dun dunking uh, training uh, for ditching in the water. Mm, but also okay. other survival trainings, uh, how you can make fire in the ice or fight a beer or <laughs> not beer, a <uh>, bear. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I come from Germany, beer. We don't fight beer in Germany, <laughs> we embrace it. No, you, you embrace it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and also I have to save money each month, a little bit money to, uh, for, uh, the, for the visa because the, um, uh, the embassy want to see uh, that I, for each day, I plan to be in America, $266. So I saved the money months per month. And the biggest issue was to find uh, insurance for me because, oh, right. um, yeah, it's a, it's a thing for the insurance. It's worldwide. I need it worldwide. And I was very fresh in aviation. They don't trust in me. I don't fly with a safety pilot. I, it's a very classic old single engine and sometimes it was an issue because I am a woman I, I had the feeling ah. so um, yeah but uh, three weeks uh, before my journey finally I got the insurance and I was so happy to go um, yeah and there was much more uh, 
what f in my preparation you have to order s some points up by some airports the Afghas sometimes it's not there when you come <laughs> right <laughs> right uh, there, it's a lot of uh, preparation and you can do and you have to be as a pilot very flexible but uh, as I say as a best as I can I prepared for this trip you mentioned um, <coughs> struggles that might be because you're a woman culturally how different is it in the United States compared to like Germany um, as far as being a woman pilot oh he here it's to total easy and uh, I feel so overwhelmed how all the people talk to me also in Germany but there are some countries in this world for example I flew in Africa to Egypt mm -hmm. you understand they are not used to general aviation they don't want general aviation they don't want women they, d they want that you come with a white blouson with the four <laughs> yellow stripes and I come with my little dress and say hello here I am they don't like it <laughs> so that is uh, in some parts uh, it's different oh that's interesting <laughs> you mentioned the saying and I've got to chew on this one that you said freedom is more important than safety and I know that that's true in a lot of things some people might say you're really pushing the boundary with the the risk factors and everything else what would you say to those people that would are, are you risking too much I guess I don't think so. I really want to become a very old pilot. Okay. <laughs> and I want that my kids grow up with a mom, of course. But I learn from the best and I talk to pilots uh, who did it in the past. And I learn all the time in each little flight. And then I expand my limit always a little bit. So uh, one day I want to circle the earth. Of course it's a risk. But it's also a risk to drive in Germany on the autobahn. So, uh, <laughs> True. <laughs> so, um, but um, you can be sure I prepare very well. well. I calculate accurate my my limits, and when I when it's not possible, of course I stay and take the train. Uh, okay. I left the plane, uh, but um, I trust in me and in my plane, in my knowledge. What I what I. I think the American people sometimes are very um, overprotected. Mm. Um, uh, it's a shame because uh, I think I want to show the pilots that you can so much more than only a one hundred dollar burger flying. <laughs> uh, you understand? Uh, you you have yeah. planes. You can fly with even when I can fly with a traveler. <laughs> this journey what can you do with a Cirrus or a Technam or uh, right. so better performed uh, planes uh, well I've had a dream of flying my uh, flying Lola my 210 over to I would love to go to Scotland and the UK with it um, but I haven't done that yet um, yeah, and even even the hundred dollar hamburger is not risk-free right uh, no for, for any kind of flying the key is you know first acknowledging that there is a risk if you don't do that then addressing those risks and then mitigating, mitigating it as much yeah. as you can and then finally accepting what is left what you cannot mitigate and and that is never zero it's certainly and higher for and and I like what you though. said and it's no it's being able to say no is always the final thing I mean you got to have permission to say no like I'm gonna take the train so yes. I like that and that's a good message so when you're not traveling the world in a tr Grumman traveler and what do you do back in Germany what's your uh, livelihood I work for uh, for the German government oh okay <laughs> fun fact I work in the Ministry of Environment so I'm the black sheep because I burn too much Afghas <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> but uh, yeah, some, sometimes I also fly from Bonn to Berlin for a business trip with my own plane. They, they doesn't like it, but... Oh, that's <laughs> funny. Okay, <It> is. <laughs> that is really funny. What's the future plans for you? So I study a lot of videos from Martin, um, <laughs> especially the MEP videos. And I did this year uh, my multi-engine rating. And I use his videos in YouTube uh, for also my training. Um, I never know where it goes my way. Um, I will look and take what it will come. I wait that the political situation becomes better, that yeah. I can fly uh, to my Israeli friends again. I mm -hmm. flew, flew there. But even about this uh, uh, jamming and spoofing, I flew in the night that I can find the lights on the coastline. Uh, but 
the issue was I doesn't found the airport. <laughs> that oh. was crazy. So I told the uh, tower, uh, I can't find you, run out of fuel. She said, wait five minutes, there will soon a Cessna 172 start for night flight training, you can follow, that was Oh, great. wow. But, and also I need Russian to fly through Russian. I have the permit to fly in, but I can't do it now. The community would kill me when I do this, but uh, I have to say the Russian pilots are great guys. They have cool planes and do very cool stuff. It's, uh, yeah, it's a shame. The political situation has yeah. to be, uh, become in a better way. And then I prepare me for this trip around the world. You have a minimum uh, one, to cross the Ecuador, that it counts as an earth rounder. And that's my goal. All right, and if people want to buy your book, where would they go? <coughs> oh, that's the important point why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> the book's name is Half Around the World in 40 Days. Um, to, today, on the last day, uh, so, uh, today. Well, no, we'll release this later, so. <coughs> okay. So, so it's available uh, on my email address, 40 days at gmx.de. And uh, I have some books in America. So the shipping cost is much easier uh, than you ordered it in Amazon. Right. Or if you want to have a signed book, then write it in this email. I sent it to you from Germany when I hopefully safe back in Germany. <laughs> okay, and I'll, I'll put the, the email. Uh, say that email one more time. Make sure I... Yeah. 40 days at gmx.de. G-M-A? G-M-X. H? X-ray. X. Oh, X. G-M-X dot D-E. Okay, great. Yeah, you Catherine, so much for, for taking time to come You're talk welcome. with us. You're welcome. It was a pleasure to see you and talk to you. And thank you. And for thank you, Martin. Thank you so much. Anytime. Mm -hmm. Okay, and thank you guys. What Don't forget, uh, do check out her book. Uh, I've started it. I just got it a couple of days ago, and and it's very, very um, mind blowing. So, it's very, uh, yeah. Check it out. Also, check out our sponsors like Colton Mortgage, ColtonTakingOff.com, ZVision, XEVision.com, 67Designs, 67D.com, and Marshall Protective Services, MPSProtects.com. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe to Martin Polly, and I'll put a link to that as well. And we'll see you guys next time on One on One. We are the ones that can provide the solution to the problem. I'm having a blast. <laughs>